Next item is a letter, uh, an email actually we received from uh, Mr. William Russo, which I'll read. <clears throat> Chris, Denise, and Michelle, I am requesting that this email be read under the public input at the next Board of Selectmen meeting. I know that you, as members of the Board of Selectmen, strive to, to have honesty, transparency, and accountability, and, all -inclusive and an all-inclusive administration. However, I have learned that there is a significant problem with the town meeting form of government, and perhaps the Achilles heel is the way our town charter is constructed. It appears to me that the Office of First Selectmen and the Board of Selectmen do not have direct authority and control uh, to ensure that all boards and commissions use a standard operating procedure to conduct town business at their meetings. Specifically, all boards and commissions must be required to make an official audio recording using a standard format to be archived in the office of the town clerk. The posting of recording, the posting of recording is a benefit to our elderly population and our townspeople who may be handicapped. <coughs> Two public inputs must be allowed for the public to address items of concern and to have the opportunity to ask questions regarding new and old business. Agendas and minutes must be posted on the town website, again, for our elderly and handicapped. Last but not least, recorded minutes should not be manipulated by a board or, commission, board or commission chair or the recording secretary. At the 4 13 16 Police Commission meeting, I stated to the Commission that a total of 14,000 incidents in Windsor Locks did not justify or support the increase in Police Department staff, along with the significant increase in our Police Department budget. I further stated that to professionalize the Police Department, that is not necessary to create a, a taller organization. Um, that it is not necessary, excuse me, to create a taller organization. The town of Windsor Locks was sold a bill of goods by then Commissioners Brace and Cunningham. I stated um, uh, and then and reiterate now it, uh, that Windsor Locks does not have a major crime problem or crime epidemic. Our geographical footprint can never be more than 4.5 square miles. This excludes our airport. The facts speak for themselves. Our police commission has historically a, has historically a renegade political body in town. They have discriminated against certain townspeople by refusing to accept emails and read them under public input. The chairman or recording secretary have continually blue skied their minutes and not accurately reported the facts. They have deliberately misled the public with the information that they chose to report in their minutes. The police commission has played games with the number of public inputs and when the public input occurs. Attached, please read how the recording secretary summarized my input this is censorship beyond belief and a total lie and deliberate misrepresentation of the facts. Does this type of skullduggery pass muster with the town's ethics policy? I think not. I am requesting that the Board of Selectmen review the co uh, conduct of the Police Commission and encourage them to moderate their thinking and actions. A response from your office is requested. I reserve the right to make this email public in many public forums. Something needs to change. So. Uh, you know, with that, I've been thinking about having known that this has been in and, um, and having uh, this issue raised to me before. The question becomes what, in my opinion, what authority the, either the first selectman or the board of selectmen has to dictate the, um, how an elected, uh, a chair of an elected you know, member of a commission operates their meetings. And there are certain restrictions by law by Connecticut law, and uh, and there may be some restrictions in the charter as well, or requirements in the charter. But uh, you know, I came in the office as a big advocate of open, open government, um, transparent government, um, and uh, these issues I you know I take seriously. So what I, 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 I mean, we're not going to do it tonight, but I want to put it on the agenda of an upcoming board of selectmen meeting. And to, to start this discussion, you know, there's certain things that we're taking sort of longer term reviews of, the personnel policy for one, automobile use policy, and I think this is one that we should take a look at as well. Um, it, it, the first question that has to be asked is, you know, we have to get uh, understanding of the legal basis. What do we have the right to do and what don't we have the right I to do? I thought you were going to see if it was uh, legal to, if you could dictate policy. Right, and that's where we're going to get an answer from, and I'm going to get it from our town attorney uh, in a formal manner so that we know what the ground rules are before we go further. Then um, what I'd like to do is, after we know that, then we've got to talk about the practical basis. 
even if we have the legal right to do it, does it make sense to do this or does it not make sense to do that? And that's something as a board we, we, we should discuss, uh, you know, taking into consideration the input that's been made, you know, to this board. Um, but I think we have to answer that question too. I don't want to prejudge it. I want the board to be able to discuss that and say, even if we can do this, is this something we want to do? Well, you know, I'm looking to resolve this at the lowest level, but I'm willing to push all the buttons that need to be pushed it's not acceptable for any board of commission to manipulate their minutes and tell outright fabrications. And if I need to, I will pursue an ethics complaint against the police commission. Well, I think it might be hard to standardize um, the minutes, but I think it might be... All I want is the truth, Denise, that's all. Yeah, and there's... Uh, if you did what I asked, when I said there's 14,000 incidents here in the town of Windsor Lock, and very few of them add up to what you would call serious crime, mm -hmm. um, and then you look at the summarization, well, Bill referred to this and Bill referred to that, and the content of what I said is missing, that's totally misleading the public. That's exactly why I started to come and tape, videotape. Right boards and commissions. It's, it's so that you can't lie, you can't deceive the public. Right. And we certainly don't want what you said to be manipulated in any way. So the, the choices I think that we have to consider is a, a transcript of every meeting that takes place in town hall. That was discussed, I remember that. You know, that, that's something that we talked about, but it's, it, it could be very cumbersome. Um, and very and much course, more expensive too. And, and expensive. <clears throat> and then the other thing is a recorded uh, version of every meeting that takes place in town hall uh, stored and available for people to, to listen to. So that those things are both pretty cumbersome. But I agree with you that um, from, from board to board you'll find the minutes are very different. And, and I don't I don't mean inaccurate, but very different. Some are just summarizations, some are more of a script. It, it, it can be something that we, we do need to streamline maybe and, and form some type of standard for every board and commission. I don't disagree with you on that at all. And we also have the technology, you know, we have the advantage of evolving technology so that what might have been expensive five years ago may not be so expensive yeah. right now. I'm going to put it to you simply, Chris. The police commission did do recordings. We have a new yeah. chairman, that. and that chairman is simply refusing. Oh, they were recording their minutes? Yeah. Right. Oh, absolutely. All they need to do is get back on board with the game plan. But somebody thinks that they can just do what they damn well please. I want to get the truth to the public. The police commission, for one, is not putting forth the truth to the public. I mean, where did you hear that there were only there were 14,000 incidents in the town of Windsor Locks other than from me? I can go back to two meetings and they said, well, we discussed crime in Windsor Locks. That was the summation. And I would gladly go over line by line that report that I have on those 14,000 instances. And I would ask you to go over it with the Chief of Police and the Board of Police Commissioners and you show me the major crime. Show it to me. Now, I've been sniffing out that maybe there's some grand plan on the way, but nobody, no public official has chosen to come forward with that information. If there is such a plan, then it should be out there to the public. I, I just have issues with the openness, the honesty, and you know, it's like, it's like I said, if I'm forced to go to the press and publicly embarrass each board and commission, and the town of Windsor Locks, and so be it. Well, I don't think you, whatever legal right you have to take as a citizen, I'm not going to discourage you from doing so. If you think there's something that should come to the press's attention, then by all means you should do that. Or if there's some other avenue, then you should do that. I'm not going to try and sit here and talk you out of that, or what are your rights as a citizen. What I'm saying is if we, if we look at the legal basis and determine we have the legal basis, then if we look at the practical basis, does it make sense to do it? Then we get to, then we get to level three, which is okay. What should we do? What should we you know? What should we standardize? What um, you know? I understand the point about recording because if the best way to the, if you if you look at the minutes of a meeting and say 
that's not what happened there. And then you have a recorded, uh, uh, you know, a uh, not a transcript typed up, but a, just a recording of that meeting, easily accessible. Then, it, at the very least, you can clip that and you can go to the next meeting and you can say, in public input session, in your minutes, it says this, but in the recording, it says this, and I want to bring it to the board's attention that there's a discrepancy. It might not go any further than that, but at least you've had the opportunity to make your point, and it's, it would be an important point. And that's As I've said, I've filed charges against the recording secretary for the police commission at one point in time for ad-libbing her, her minutes. So if it can be done practically, it can be done at a reasonable expense, I think it's a good cross-check, and I think it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a way to keep boards and commissions recordings. Yeah, recordings. And, you know, and I so would so just I like to remind that. you that I don't think the town is in compliance with the ADA, and I didn't go into the Braille and stuff, right. but we do have blind people in town, and if you want me to go find them and you know say, hey, you want to be... In the, uh, up to date on yeah. your politics, you know, we need something in Braille, I'll do that. Yeah. Well, I'll include that in my quest for the town attorney. That you know, and I, I don't know if you want a discussion on it. I was actually going to, really. well, <laughs> then I was going to bring it up in public input. But yeah. the thing is, is I understand what Denise is saying about a stenographer. But the thing is, is that you're an attorney. You know that a stenographer can only copy one person at a time. So if another person makes a comment that's a very important comment, while that stenographer is copying that person that she's talking about, she can't get the other person's comment, whereas an audio tape can. And the thing is, is that if you look at town politics all around the world, everybody's recording nowadays. You're recording. You go, the night that I was kicked out of that police commission meeting, I was upset and I was watching the news. And that night, the town of West Hartford had... Uh, they had 11 o'clock news and there was something going on in the town of West Hartford. It was a very important thing that was going on and I forget what it was, but there was a massive turnout where people were talking and there were people that were upset. And they had a West Hartford sergeant that walked up to somebody that was upset and he was screaming at the board. And the guy, the sergeant walked up, never took his hands up from his sides. He walked up, whispered to the guy on, that was talking at the podium. The guy turned back, he whispered back to the officer. It was a done deal. There was nobody jumping up from the counter and rushing over to try to lay hands on anybody or none of that garbage. You well, know, I don't it's wanna, all about to get into a, it too. into a back and forth because we've had our public input on the issue. Um, I just have one question. Yeah. With regards to the audio, how were you provided that? Was it on the web? Or was it just available? Well, right now I can go to Lock's and I can I can record I can listen to any uh, board of selectmen meeting. That's I just uh, want to know how it was made available to you. So uh, on CD. Okay. On, on CD. Not on not on the web because usually it's space issue. No, usually Sue had it for okay. us. Okay. But again, why couldn't we? Why shouldn't we? 